tui te rangi e tui nei, tui te papa e te koutou nei, tui te heranga tangata. Ka rango te pau, ka rango te au, tihei Māori ora. E whakahona rei tia ana, te kingi Māori, a kingi tuhi tia, pau tātou, te pera pera, te tuawhetu. E ngā waka, e ngā mana, e ngā maunga whakahi o te matu, tēnā rā kauta katoa. E rā rangati rama, nā mā haramai, ki te pā, te pūmanawa o te whari wānango o Waikapa. Nā reira, koutou koe taumai nei, e tēnei ahi ahi pō, tēnā koutou, whurinoa tēnā tātou katoa. Welcome everyone, welcome to uh, the PAR, if it's your first time uh, here, uh, the beating heart of the university, uh, as, we, uh, as we say now. Uh, so um, I'm not sure which generation I represent, uh, uh, but I can assure you the excitement starts after I've spoken, so uh, just hold on for, uh, for a minute. Um, while I say it is a great pleasure to be here uh, to celebrate uh, with you uh, 50 years of uh, computer science at, at the University of Waikato. Uh, as you are going to hear this evening, and as most of you uh, know already, uh, it is a 50 years uh, that is really worth celebrating. A 50 years of some really extraordinary achievements, uh, some extraordinary people who've shaped the course of computer science, not just at this university, but internationally. Uh, and that's a great source of pride for me as Vice-Chancellor today and, and all of our colleagues here uh, and, and those who have gone uh, before us. The official history of the university records a few snippets of uh, the history uh, of uh, computer science at the university. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, Tataka has mentioned it, but you know, universities spend their time uh, uh, confronting government policies, trying to work with them and, uh, and rubbing up against them, and have done uh, right from the beginning of this university. Uh, there are many stories that some of you will know about uh, the challenges we've had here, uh, but they began here with, uh, as the history records, that the tangles uh, from the 1970s created by the demands of computing for university administrative activities uh, while at the same time uh, computing was required for university academic activities. Uh, the long process to persuade the university grants committee as it was then uh, to fund uh, computer science at the university as a separate department. Um, those were the days of real centralised control in New Zealand uh, and, uh, and in Wellington sat a group of wise people who uh, not only allocated capital grants to each of the universities but actually decided what the staffing in each university should be as well. Uh, and of course out of those challenges and eventually persuading the University Grants Committee for funding uh, for a computer science uh, department uh, came uh, our work uh, on the internet uh, as it emerged uh, and the data mining and the software revolutions uh, as they uh, took over uh, computer science and became areas in which uh, we not only excelled but actually made a huge international uh, contribution. So it's a great pleasure uh, for me that uh, tonight we're able to have so many people who were part of the very beginning of computer science at this university uh, and, uh, and to see you know, th those names on the guest list this evening uh, from uh, the history of the university and the record uh, of those very uh, early years uh, in, in the 50. So you're going to hear a lot from people uh, who've been part of those uh, 50 years, uh, but let me just say again, uh, thank you all for being here this evening 
Uh, it's fantastic that so many of you have shown up uh, and I think a real tribute uh, to the great contribution that computer science at this university has made. Thank you all very much. Uh, okay, we're going to move on with our program. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of speakers. Um, the first speaker, some people here may be aware of who he is. Uh, his name is Bill Rogers. Uh, Bill Rogers received um, a Bachelor of Science in 1973. Um, he has been a fundamental rock, shall I say, of the computer science department. Um, and he had a senior lecturer role for many years, um, but recently has stepped down from that. So, to talk about the computer science department in the very early years, Bill Rogers. Kia ora. Well, actually, to not quite live up to that exactly, I was asked to answer two questions. Uh, one, I think these were designed for student speakers, really. One was how the university set me up for success, and the other was to describe one highlight. Um, so I thought I'd start off with setting me up for success. So I completed bachelor's and master's degrees at the university here in chemistry, biology, and mathematics uh, back in 72, 3, 4, 5. Um, and I just stayed on, so it didn't really. <laughs> so in that sense, I think what I would like to say is my major success was achieving 42 years of service, which is indeed, of course, the answer to life, the universe, and everything, <laughs> as we know from Douglas Adams, and I sincerely hope that Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is still required reading for all computer scientists. So then my other question was to describe one highlight and you know, directing academics, as the Vice-Chancellor and the Dean, I'm sure, will be well aware, has been likened to uh, herding cats. So my immediate response is, well, I don't like the question. I mean, I don't think that <laughs> one highlight would really suffice for that number of years. So I thought instead I'd just describe my favourite ongoing aspects of being at Waikato. So I think first and foremost, I've liked being free to pursue aspects of computer science as the subject has developed over all the years and the, asp uh, the aspects of that that interest me. I've liked the range of people I've met, the ideas, the technology that I've experienced and the places that I've visited. So over the years I've taught programming, once even in COBOL, computer hardware, operating systems, algorithms, computer graphics, programming, on the internet and smartphones, the internet of things, and various aspects of software engineering. I've been had the opportunity to take students to international competitions um, in Australia, in Florida, in Korea, and in Russia. Um, of the things I've particularly liked, I've been particularly fond of lunch <laughs> um, over the years. Lunch, lunch has been a marvelous opportunity. One of the things I suppose that teachers in all sorts of teaching institutions' experience is that they spend a lot of time with their students and surprisingly little with their colleagues. And lunch has been that opportunity to interact with and talk with a diverse group of really interesting people that I consider good friends um, over all those years. So lunch, lunch is up there. I've liked the diverse range of students I've met. So just some little examples here. Um, I had a graduate student who was a professional wrestler. Um, we didn't work on wrestling. Uh, I've had sports people who've worked in volleyball and athletics and we've done software in support of them. I had a chimney sweep who decided that he would transfer to computer science before he fell off a roof and <laughs> injured himself badly. Um, I've learnt how people manage to get to sleep in 50 degree summers in Pakistan, so apparently you hose down a concrete slab and you lie on that. Um, I have learnt how cursing works in Sweden, and I won't go into that. Um, and I've even been told by an Inuit speaker exactly how many words there are for snow in the Inuit language that, that he used. But I do think I'd finish with one little anecdote, and thanks to Taka for setting something of a tone here. I wasn't really sure kind of what the tone of this would be. 
But being a teacher is often a bit humbling and often what we learn or experience in a class may not be what was intended or what we expect. So my very best tutorial experience ever, I think, was in about 1996, which I'll nominate as my decade, I guess. And we were talking about the potential and impact of this newfangled idea, the internet. And so I was teaching bits of communication software and internet programming at that time. And we had a weekly tutorial. And one of the topics I sort of set for this was um, talking about what the internet was, what its impacts would be. And at that time, what, what I can say is that we were completely wrong in almost everything that we expected of it. But the tutorial was kind of right, and I'll, I'll explain. It was expected to be a democratizing innovation. What was unexpected was the domination of advertising, the survival and growth of traditional um, copyright protection, where people had kind of hoped that individual artists and producers of material would interact directly with their public. The, the structures really survived all of that. And mostly the dominance of consumption over contribution. It was expected that people would contribute to the web rather than just absorb information. Anyway, I had one very interesting stud uh, student in a tutorial here who was from South Africa. And he told the tale of a neighbor. So he lived on a farm before he left South Africa near the Namibian border. And if you know anything about South African law, one of the things that's key is that you're not allowed to deal with diamonds. Um, and he had a neighbor who was engaged in a diamond smuggling operation over the border into Namibia. Was, I'm not going to try and reproduce this. It was a wonderful spellbinding tale of uh, struggling across the border, escaping guards and things. But the upshot of it was that he was cheated out of an impressive amount of money in exchange for a tube of rocks. He'd been shown these uncut diamonds, and when he finally got them, they were hidden in the right place. They weren't. And I felt that of all the discussions we had as to where the internet was going, maybe that story really captured what actually happened, that the internet has developed in a way that's had huge benefits and a great deal of pleasure for many people, but perhaps has also cheated us out of potential development um, in the world's implementation of democracy and, and exchange of information. So that was the sense in which I'm thanking Tataka for having a you know, slightly negative aspect as well. But, <laughs> um, but mainly my highlight is the people that I've met, the places that I've been, and how much I've enjoyed being part of it all. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Excellent. Can't help thinking that uh, what you're saying about the internet is somehow parallels with what's happening with artificial intelligence at the moment. Yes, that's just going to say. Uh, but fortunately, we have an artificial intelligence institute within our computer science. Well, associated with our computer science department, shall we say. Then, Mark Way, Bill. <coughs> okay, so the next speaker we have tonight um, is Andrew Scothern. <coughs> Andrew Scothern will be here talking to us about the period 1984 to 1993, when he was involved with our department. Tēnā koe, Andrew. Kia ora, everyone. Uh, pleasure to be here. It's, it is fantastic to see so many people. Um, and, yeah, I, like I'm proud to come from this place uh, and to have been through this program. I can't take credit for all of those. I only started in 92. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, I know I look older. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so look, when I was, when I was uh, growing up um, over in Tauranga, um, I was always really interested in computing. And when I was looking for a university, you know, I was lo looking around, see what's available. And the thing that drew me to Waikato was really the fact that they had a dedicated computer science degree. Like everywhere else it was a Bachelor of Engineering or Bachelor of Science, you could major in computing. And I loved the fact that there was something dedicated to that. And I think even then it was, it was recognizing that this is a really important part of the, of the future. Um, so, so that was huge for me. Uh, I also got asked to talk about highlights and, and what, what I learned. And again, uh, I, I don't think I could pick only one. Um, probably the thing that stands out the most, if I'm honest, is the fact that I still had a full head of hair 
back then. Uh, that was pretty special. Uh, that's something you could be proud of in the 90s, you know, the whole, whole boy band type thing. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, but really, I think it was, you know, it was the f facilities were a huge part. The internet was there. It was starting. This was the birth um, of the internet really starting to take off, and that was a really exciting time. We had the labs. We had modern computers. We had great facilities, uh, and it was exciting to be part of. Uh, and, and the lecturers all had, had a passion for it. You know, this was an industry that was going somewhere, and the passion was clearly there. Uh, and you couldn't help but be a little bit excited about, you know, the things that you were learning. Uh, another highlight was probably the late night labs. I'm sure most people have lived through the late night labs where that dangerous combination of sleep deprivation and too much caffeine can lead to some suboptimal decision making. Um, <laughs> you can read one of my stories, I think it got posted online about something I may or may not have done in a, in a given situation. But though it's also special, you're working with other people, you, often you're working with groups to achieve things, and again, you're, doing, you're just learning the entire time. I even enjoyed, and I didn't at the time, but looking back now, it was, it was actually really good. Um, I was doing an uh, information systems stream for computing and mathematical sciences, and I was doing management papers and accounting papers and organisational behaviour papers, and I distinctly remember at the time thinking, why am I doing this? i got no interest. Like, I, I like engineering, I like maths, I'm like, not this rubbish. I'm never going to be in a leadership position. Why would I need to know this sort of stuff? So <laughs> thank you very much for knowing better than I, um, <laughs> the department. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that was, that was really good. But I think overall, it was the breadth, and I think this was previously mentioned, it was the breadth of areas and ideas that I was exposed to. Um, so, you know, understanding how computer science was going to have a role in more than just an engineering or a scientific discipline. It was going to have a role in all sorts of fields in the future and really starting to learn and appreciate that. So when I think about all that, what really set me up for success was, was that whole experience cementing a lifelong passion for learning, which I still have, and I think most people in this room probably have, that, that desire to learn new things, to be excited about new things, and also really enabling me to appreciate the bigger picture and go beyond just engineering excellence. And that's really what's enabled me to add the most value to the organisations and the groups that uh, I've worked with in the past. So happy birthday to the School of Computing and Mathematical Science, and thank you very much for setting me up for success. <clears throat> Thank you, Angie. Excellent to hear. Uh, next, so um, the next uh, speaker we have is a student who was here in the 2000s, so we're moving into this millennium. Uh, current founder and director of Wi Fi, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science in 2002, postgraduate di diploma in Computer Science in 2009. Tenakwe Thomas. Thank you. Um, yeah, just before I, uh, before I start, I'll just tell a bit of a story. Um, it's a story about a uh, young first year student named, um, let's call him Bob. Uh, it could be you or me, um, probably me. Um, Bob was, yeah, so excited to attend Waikato University. Uh, just the atmosphere around it, the uh, computer science department, the uh, excitement for learning. Um, it was actually a bit embarrassing how exciting he was. Um, he went and researched all the papers, looked at all the descriptions. Uh, the internet was in full bloom at that point and um, yeah, just, just could, couldn't really understand what he wanted to do. He's very excited about a lot of different things. Um, so Bob chose a uh, nice uh, degree structure that had a whole bunch of different papers, including a really uh, strong foundation in computer science. Um, so yeah, he studied uh, artificial intelligence before it was cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but yeah, we know uh, artificial intelligence has always been cool here at the uh, University of Waikato. Um, and uh, Bob spent a couple of years at university um, before entering the workforce. Um, it's sort of this this guy Bob was really sort of quite practical, so he just wanted to get his hands on on the doing. Um, and it's just it, it speaks like a, a lot to a. a university to sort of just let that hybrid uh, education environment sort of work, right? So two years at university and then 
yeah, over the next, I think, four or six or something years, uh, sort of polished off the, the, other, the other degrees. Um, and yeah, every stage, uh, Bob was supported by the university in his journey. Uh, the people who were here, the people who are here, and, and the people who will be here. Um, <coughs> Bob got into a little trouble here and there, right? It wasn't a straightforward journey. There was uh, ups and downs. Um, and uh, at one point, Bob, yeah, he found himself in front of someone a little bit, little bit scary. And uh, it's, um, yeah, late, late night, dangerous uh, situation, right? You uh, a little bit enthusiastic about maybe networks. And uh, the Linux environment was very locked down at the time, but the <laughs> Mac environment wasn't. Um, <laughs> Um, and yeah, like hey, that's that's um, the, the good news is yeah, Bob's a successful business owner now, and <laughs> <coughs> and uh, wouldn't wouldn't be there without the University of Waikato. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd um, and and that's what it's about, the people, right? So yeah, I'd, I'd like to pay yeah, really special respects to everyone who's been part of my journey, and and um, and I guess everyone's journey here. And uh, yeah, we we all know that the University of Waikato is a world class institution, and um, yeah wouldn't be here today without my time, so very proud to call myself alumni, and uh, Bob is too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bob. Uh, Thomas. <laughs> okay, so the next speaker we have is going to talk to us about um, life in the university in the 2000s. Um, Nadia is a business analyst and a yeah business analyst for programming commercial here at Waikato University. So we've managed to keep her. She hasn't escaped from us yet. Uh, Bachelor of Science with honours in computer science in 2015. Master of Information in 2016. Uh, Tinakwe Nadia Ibrahim. Uh, cool. Uh, good afternoon, staff and guests of the Co School of Computer and Mathematical Science. Uh, it is an honour to stand before you today as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of this department. And during such occasions, it's difficult not to reminisce about my own time here. Um, I first enrolled in the computer science degree in 2012, a year most notable for its many end of the world predictions. Uh, clearly, this could only be construed as a good omen into my introduction into academia. In the years preceding that, uh, that followed, I became very aware that my passion for computer science was often not enough to pass the rigours of our practical assignments. There were many late night sessions, a lot of exasperations to endless errors, and the growing unease that I would never reach the point of graduation. Apparently, 2012 strikes again. <laughs> Um, nonetheless, uh, on a warm day in 2016, I carefully strode across the stage in my regalia, desperately trying to remember which hand was meant for shaking and which hand was meant for receiving. Uh, for those taking note, the answer is not both. <laughs> I had finally reached the anticipated day of graduation and it was a very proud moment for me, a moment that I reviled in. This moment was immediately interrupted when I spilt water on my brand new graduation not 20 minutes after receiving it, much to the mirth of my friends and the disappointment of my parents. As I transitioned from a student, into the work, well, a student to an employee in the workforce, the foundation I created during my time here was instrumental in shaping my professional trajectory. The analytical mindset, the collaborative experiences, and adaptability in the face of new challenges have all been skills I highly utilize to this day. However, even with these skills, it would be a disservice to say that they were the only things that I gained from my time here. Sorry, qualification also excluded. For every night light session within the confines of a computer lab, there were my fellow friends who delivered food on the assistance that coffee was not a food substitute. For every unsolvable assignment, there was my tutor who would give up his lunch break, running over the concepts again and again until I was able to understand. And for every doubt or roadblock that came my way, there was my advisor, with his unrivaled optimism, who could find a path through any problem I presented. The anniversary we here to celebrate today celebrates the continuation of the Institute of Computer Science. 
It is more fitting that I pay homage to all the people, past and present, who have made the success of this program possible. To those who helped me and many others, I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude for your support during my journey. Thank you to all my classmates who became my own cheer squad. Thank you to my tutor who didn't give up on me. And thank you to my advisor who cleared my path to success. It is only with your care, dedication and support to students who enter this program that makes it a success. I can also say without your help, I would not be the person who stands before you today. When you leave the university, you leave with the knowledge that those connections carry you forward, that the support given is the template for the support you give others, and that no matter how many world ending events are predicted for your future, you strive forward in the knowledge that there are people always willing to help. Congratulations to the Department of Computer Science and reaching your 50th anniversary. I have no doubt with your continuing efforts, there will be many more anniversaries to come. Kia ora, Amelia, thank you very much. Um, interesting to hear the similarities weaving through our past students. Um, now we'll have um, some information, some talk from a current student, uh, Zach Isaac. So Zach uh, completed a BCMS in 2019 with honours, uh, got a diploma in finance also in 2019. Good trick. Master of Science in 2020 and is currently working on his PhD in mathematics. Tēnā koe Zach. Oh, geez, there's way more people than I thought, eh? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm kind of the old one out here. I didn't really do much comp sci at all in my degree. I <laughs> feel very odd. Uh, so yeah, my name's Zach Isaac. I'm a PhD student here in the maths department. I guess most of you probably won't know where that is. Uh, that's the quiet little space up the top of G-Block. Um, there aren't many of us here, but we do exist, mathematicians. So, yeah. When I finish up my PhD next year, I'll have been hanging around here, not working, studying for nearly a decade. Uh, I did my BCMS in maps, I did my MSc in maps, now my doctorate, which is kind of scary if you think about it, 10 years of maps. <laughs> and imagine the size of my student loan. <laughs> I think I'm single-handedly keeping the maps department afloat just about. <laughs> no, seriously, it's crazy to think it's been so long and there's so many highlights along the way. I knew from the first day here that this place operated a little differently when I walked into my first Math 101 lecture 2015 and the lecturer, Professor Sean Alton, was there in his jandals, singlet, stubbies. He'd just come straight from football. And I thought, okay, all right, that's how it works around here. But uh, that, for me, being from Wolfotsky, a little town, that was pretty cool. That set me right up and I knew I was at home there. Early on, I got involved with student clubs on campus. Many of you will remember or recall the famous Computer Science Student Society, CS Cubed. If you don't, I guess uh, in summary, it's, it's essentially a trap for lonely students from maths, comp sci, data and design. We kind of lure them in with a few free pizzas and uh, trick them into socialising and networking. <laughs> then we tell them about the pub crawl that happens at the end of the year and that kind of, that keeps them motivated all the way through to October. I was, um, I was one of those students. I uh, was in better shape than I am now after all the pizza over the years. But uh, many years ago, I happened to wander past S Block, caught a sniff of some pizza, and I strolled into what happens to be the club's AGM, and I thought, you know, there's too many comp sci students here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring a maths approach. So I joined the committee, and that began my love affair with procrastinating from work by doing club things instead. Nowadays, I have the interesting position of being the president of the Computer Science Student Society uh, but never having done more than first year computer science, so don't tell them that. Uh, interestingly, 2023 actually marks the 10-year anniversary for CS Cubed after it was founded by people like Grace Nolan and uh, Brad Cowie back in 2013. The school supported us every step of the way and helped give me some of my personal biggest highlights from my time in SCMS, from organising the CS Cubed Careers Fair in May with over 200 students, 17 companies in attendance, to seeing Associate Professor Titaka Keegan at the pub crawl, furiously finishing as many human bingo cards as he could before we left the hilly. We even started a Tauranga branch of the club this year, and I've spent many days over the other side of the Kaimais, uh, desperately dragging students, kicking and screaming, into talking to each other, which is a strange concept for comp sci students. 
Beyond CS Cubed, I also founded the university's first club focused on students with interests in maths and data, the Mathematics and Co Club, or MT Squared for short. Again, there aren't many of us, it's mostly just me and a couple of others, but we do exist. With the support of SCMS, we've held events on campus celebrating Pi Day, we've run stalls at Open Day, hosted a mini math student seminar, and then slowly again dragged those few math students closer together, trying to build up some form of community. I think Overall, almost counterintuitively, given the stereotype of students in our field, the biggest thing I'll take away from SCMS is the ability to manage myself and communicate with others. I've worked with lecturers and supervisors who've allowed me to grow my research skills in my own way. I've worked on computational astrophysics projects, tissue optics projects, all sorts of different things in between. I've been to conferences to present my work. The school hired me as a tutor for some reason, and they developed my ability to teach. And then they kind of made another mistake. They hired me as a school ambassador and they got me speaking to the public without sounding like a robot, which was kind of cool. And through clubs like CS Cubed and MC Squared, I've developed my skills in managing people in groups, which I think all up is not really a bad return for little old Wycotts, honestly. And here's the next 50 years of students coming through. Thank you. Can I quite sick? Uh, I've noticed that um, the people who got up and speaking who are a bit older use pieces of paper, but the people who are a bit younger are using their phones. So I think I'm going to start using my phone in the future if I have to get up to speak so people think that I'm younger. <laughs> uh, kia ora, Zach, um, and th thanks to, to all of our speakers uh, for giving the audience a little bit of a taste of remembrance. Um, to what computer science has been over the years, so tēnā koutou. Um, the next speaker we've got on our list is our current Dean of our school, um, Anika Hines. Um, Anika has been quite proactive in a lot of the the celebration activities we've had this year. Nō reira, tēnā koe, Anika, and for me it was very appropriate that she received her professorship as the first woman Professor of Computer Science of our university, why we had our fiftieth year. No reira, tēnā koe, e te rangatira, kei a koe. Kia ora. Tēnā koutou katoa, um, ko ane katoa koe ingoa. Thank you for coming to the celebration. Wow, I can see all the t-shirts over there. This is neat. Yeah, I agree. This is really actually cool looking from here. It's quite lovely. Um, thank you for coming, for celebrating with us. I acknowledge all the students and staff and colleagues, all of you coming. That is lovely. Lovely to see you. I'd like to name all of you, but that's going to be tricky. So I thought this is what I do. I can't name all of you. So I will list our hats of computer science and the head of schools. And the ones that are in gold are the ones that are actually here. I hope I didn't forget anyone who's here. Please wave if <laughs> if your name isn't in gold and you're, you're also here. And now, of course, I want to look. Daryl, Daryl, I saw you earlier. Daryl Smith, first head of computer science is is here, which is absolutely lovely. So make sure you talk to him later. Um, so yes, it's actually absolutely lovely to have you here. I also like to acknowledge, so you can see this is my job now. I'm acknowledging lots of people being here. So I'd like to thank our sponsors, our industry partners. It's great to have you on board. Um, and also previous students, most of you turned into industry partners one way or the other. You just can't let go and we love having you and it's fabulous. Also, thank you. You both have seen the little goodie bag. So thank you to the sponsors. This is an artwork and there seems to be now a new tradition that started um, at 30 years celebration. So this is an artwork by Don Ratana that celebrates 50 years of computing in Waikato. If you did the tour earlier, uh, you will have seen it in the entranceway of G Block. It lists every single course in computer science uh, through all the years. So, Bill, you will be able to find all of your courses there, I think. It's called Unlimited Abilities, Infinite Possibilities. 
absolutely fascinating. Colleagues tell me they stand and, and look at it for quite some time, looking at all the different words in there. So what I thought I'd do while showing you this picture is, um, well, Neil has already listed a number of milestones and first, I think I'd like to extend that list and add some more in, marking the years of the department. So when we were eight, Computing at Waikato received the first international research grant in New Zealand. That was some colleague here at Waikato. When we were 16, you know that part, we were quite instrumental in setting up the first New Zealand internet connection. When we were 30, we welcomed our first design colleagues into the family. At 33, we were recognized as the best computer science research department as part of the PBF exercise. At 34, our first software engineering students graduated. At 40, we created the very first MOOC from a university in New Zealand. At 50, we had our first female professor and our first graduates at our new Tauranga campus. So that's our Tauranga campus. And there's some colleagues here that work over there at the moment. And a lot of people are going over the Kaimais supporting our staff over there. In the middle, you see Hangzhou. So I want to recognize and acknowledge my colleagues who couldn't come to celebrate with us because they're working at Hangzhou in China teaching our design degree. And you see Hainan University where we're starting our new partnership that is next year with our Bachelor in AI starting there. We've just employed our first staff member. So while we're strictly speaking celebrating 50 years of computing, because it was 50 years that we had the computer science department, it's all slightly more complicated because the mathematicians and the statisticians were there first and the school actually came later. So what we actually decided to do is that we celebrate all of us together, all the colleagues in all the different fields in the school and our partners and our students. We were actually the first school at Waikato to have a Tereo name. And at that time, the best we could come up with was to translate the English name directly into Tereo. Well, times have moved on and we're doing this slightly differently now. So there's two aspects to this. One thing is also in looking at starting with stats, math, then computing. In going forward, we're looking at where we're actually going. So we're now focusing on different strategic areas, perhaps, even though some people have already done AI before. So within computing and software engineering, we look at artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and human-centered computing. And we're joined by now data analytics, mathematics, and design. So in order to acknowledge this change of the different areas that we represent within the school, and also to embrace a new way that the university has found for how to create the Tireo names for schools, uh, we've been seeking for quite some time a new Maori name for the school. I'm, however, totally not qualified to tell you about this. So I'd like to have Titaka come back and actually introduce and um, explain the new name that we found and that we will then go forward and hopefully making the official name. Just when I thought I was sitting down. Good <clears throat> uh, everybody. So, um, we, we wanted to, in terms of a new name for a school, both in English and in Māori, we wanted to think of, from, from a Māori perspective, rather than list all the different departments, all the different streams of research, what was something that encapsulated all of that research? What was something that showed us how it all come together? Um, so, so I actually worked with a couple of uh, colleagues from the Māori department, uh, Professor Tom Roa and uh, Haki Tuopuki, and I worked with them for a long time 
um, trying to really identify what computer science or what our faculty or what our school, what all of this meant. Um, and we, we went backwards and forwards for at least six months. We started working on this for over, like over a year ago. Um, and really it was about, um, we, we think our faculty has the ability to um, take something that's really complex and make it simple um, and then take something that's simple and extrapolate it out so that it's complex. Um, so there's a Māori saying, <clears throat> um, he ngāwari te hōhunu, he hōhunu te ngāwari, which simply means that um, from the complex there is simplicity and from the simplicity there is complexity. Um, but that's not, <laughs> that's not the name we used because that would be <laughs> too long. Uh, so eventually we settled and um, we haven't made this official yet, Neil, so that's maybe coming down the track. So this is an unofficial, unqualified name. Uh, yeah, perhaps we should have worked on that before. <laughs> but here we, here we are. Um, so eventually we settled on this name here, O Rei Kura, O Rei Kura. Um, and the thinking is kind of three phrases inside of O, De, and Kura. So the first phrase, O, O is in Māori, it's a stream. And so the thinking is, we have lots of different streams. And a little bit of that thinking is in the, the artwork that Don Ratana created. There's all of these different streams, all of these different areas of research, of understanding, of enlightenment that come through our school or our faculty. So that's what O is about. It's gathering all of the different streams. Re is about collecting them all together. So taking all of these streams and bringing them together. And the thinking is within our faculty, we're collecting them all together. We're taking the diverse, we're taking the complex, collecting them all together, making them simple, and then spreading them out. And the spreading out is some examples of some of the students that have been talking tonight. Uh, and kura, kura is a traditional word, uh, it's got a bunch of different meanings, uh, it means the colour red, uh, one of the traditional meanings is school, but in this example it's treasured. So it's the treasured convergence of a number of different streams. And was how we could best describe what we've been doing and what we intend to do um, in our school. So o de kura. Uh, we'll do some steps to make sure it becomes an official name and then hopefully we might start seeing it in some places. Uh, and bring it up. And we purposely didn't use school, department, division, faculty because universities have a habit of changing those all the time. Kia ora. Kia ora Taka. I looked at all the papers that we wrote over the years, 50 years of paper writing, oh my God. So um, look at this, clearly the people who do digital libraries need to name those in the title immediately. You actually don't see that the machine learning people say, I'm doing machine learning, but digital library, you can absolutely see there. If you're wondering about the wind and the turbulence, that's the mathematicians. <laughs> so, so over the years, um, all of these publications, so 1,500 publications, over 40,000 citations, often co-written with students, so nine, nine, 5,000 undergraduates and more than 1,000 postgraduates and 142 PhDs and all of these academics and students working together. Looking at this, you might wonder, how did these citations come up? Who's who gets cited? Well, I can tell you who got most cited. And that was actually, nope, that's the wrong computer. Um, it's this one. It's Ian's book, together with Ivan. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, not surprised. <laughs> not surprised at all. It's the fourth edition. And if you wonder what was the runner up? <laughs> yeah, indeed. 
So Ian, of course, had a huge influence in the topics we looked at over the time in working with young colleagues, with the students. So we thought we want to find a way of honoring Ian. And we set up an Ian Whitten Prize in computer science. So we will start this in 2024 and it will be awarded annually to the student with the highest grade point average who's enrolled in the final year of the Bachelor of Computer Science. You might cite me, so that's why I was so careful in how I phrased this. So, so this will be going to a student who's really engaged in computer science. But if you knew Ian, you also know he was not just all about computer science. He was also all about his clarinet and bringing that to the conferences and playing. And in later years, I think he's, I don't know whether he started painting, at least he did do lots of drawing and going out and painting. So we felt we also needed to capture that side. And together with the School of Arts, we've set up an Ian Witten Summer Research Scholarship that will go to a student who works in both the arts and in computer science. And it's set up together with the School of Arts. So that will also come into um, effect first time in 2024. It's been a full year. You will have seen that we had so many announcements and talks and what we had done actually, we celebrated throughout the whole year, this 50 year anniversary. We had elected different themes, topics for each of the month. And then in each month we had a public speaker representing each of the different areas that we now have. And if you missed any of them, you can actually go to our website. They've all been recorded, so you can still look at them and watch them. This is my moment to thanking some more people. I'd like to thank the people from the library, who turns out had a lot of old pictures from G-Block and R-Block, and they made those available to us. So you will also find on the website a history of the department. and to staff who turned out all had little archives and then came forward with these pictures so we could scan them and bring all of those together. So I really recommend having a look at our photo collection there. And of course, also thank you to all the staff who personed all the stalls out there and, and showing off the interesting research. So back to the web page. On this page, we also showcase some of our graduates so you can find out where they are in the world now, what they're doing, where they're taking these degrees out into the world. And if you're, several of you are one of our alumni, please also go and add in your memories. Tell your stories, perhaps edit them beforehand, however much you want to tell um, in public, but it would be lovely to bring together all of your different memories. We will keep this page and an update and um, you will celebrate with us. So to wrap up, I have two things still to come. One of them is, as Titaka had already said, is that we will go out and we'll all sit on the bleachers and we will get our picture taken because the last time we did this is 20 years ago and really another one is absolutely due to take and so please everybody to do this. But that's the last one. So there's one more step before that. So before we do this, we would really like to honor one of our colleagues and I'm really hoping that we managed um, to keep this a surprise. And to do this, I will hand over to BC Neil Quigley again for the procedure. Thank you. Another piece of paper. <laughs> no. So um, to cap um, 50 years of innovative thinking and uh, doing things uh, differently uh, from the usual university way, um, my colleagues in uh, computing and mathematics uh, brought me a very interesting challenge um, not that long ago, actually, um, especially as these things go. So you'll be aware that uh, the university has a system of uh, university honours um, and uh, the path uh, to get one of those university honours is, is usually quite long. It requires a university nomination, um, goes through 
uh, a, um, a honours committee of the University Council and uh, to academic board uh, before uh, finally being approved by the full University Council. Uh, so, um, uh, as a test of the fleet-footedness of the University Administration, we were asked whether we could do all of this in uh, a few weeks. Uh, a, a, and, uh, and to support it, I was presented with a significant dossier of, uh, of uh, letters of support uh, for the person uh, that uh, that we're about to to honour. Um, so, yes, it um, seems fitting uh, as the School of Computing and Mathematical Science celebrates 50 years uh, that we wanted to recognise someone who's made a really substantial contribution both to the university and to the broader community of computing uh, over a very significant career. Uh, so it gives me great pleasure uh, to say that uh, uh, I'm presenting this evening a University of Waikato medal uh, to you, Bill, uh, to Bill Rogers. Uh, <laughs> So you've heard a little bit about Bill this evening, but I'll just briefly go some of, through some of the things that are in the citation. Uh, Bill embarked on his academic journey at the university in February 1978, uh, as, uh, as you've heard. Over the years, he's really become an integral part of the university's legacy in computer science, uh, positively impacting the lives of countless students and colleagues uh, until uh, his recent retirement. A large number of people wrote in support uh, of this nomination just as a, a wonderful indication of how many people there are uh, that Bill has helped. He's known for introducing cutting-edge subject matter into degrees to expose students to new technologies. Uh, and as an example, and his paper on mobile computing and the Internet of Things in 2019 became a key component of the new smart electrical and electronic engineering degree uh, that we offer. Uh, recognizing the need for high school scholarship programs to promote computing as a study subject, Bill also single-handedly established and led uh, the University Computer Science Undergraduate Scholarship Program, an initiative that's allowed a very large number of students uh, to come to the university who otherwise might have been discouraged uh, by modern uh, tuition fees. Bill's well known also for his outreach efforts with high schools, including workshops and events that have introduced students to the exciting world of computing, uh, inspiring many to pursue degrees at the university. His role in organizing and hosting events such as the Global Game Jam uh, and the International Collegiate Programming Contest has significantly enriched the academic experience of students, raised the university's profile on the international stage. Uh, successes through the years included having a University of Waikato team in the World Finals in 2000 and in 2014. Bill's extensive research contributions in areas like computer systems, human-computer interaction, and computer graphics have not only advanced the field, but also provided a captivating material base uh, for the work of others. He's authored more than 80 journal and conference papers and supervised more than 70 students in honors degrees, dissertations, masters, and, and PhD theses. Bill's willingness to share knowledge and his dedication to assisting others is regarded by all those who wrote as one of the hallmarks uh, of his career. Uh, so uh, for a really exemplary, exemplary contribution to computer science at this university, it's my pleasure to present a University of Waikato medal to Bill Rogers. Bill.
all this pride. But very unexpected. Oh, three glory. Meetings. Meetings. That could probably just operate. He said in the case, that's the thought. Well, yes, I explained to somebody, I, I really only speak in 50 minute slabs. Uh, and I'm quite good at that. I mean, if, if you start me, I will stop at 50 minutes. So that's encouraging, unless it's a two hour lecture period. Um, this came as a complete, utter, and total surprise. Um, yeah. So thank you, everybody, for your support. And I guess thank you also for the opportunity over all these years to be part of so many different and exciting things. I think it's certainly uh, part of the academic career that I've valued very much, that I've basically been able, allowed to do whatever I wanted. Yeah, but, well, I know I was not allowed to, but I, I've done whatever I've wanted and nobody's complained. And I, I have enjoyed all of that. So thank you, Neil. Thank you, everybody. I won't continue for the remainder of the 15 minutes. Uh, kia ora everyone. Um, this wasn't on the agenda. These were just underneath my chair, so I thought I might give them out. Um, so I've got some gifts for our speakers. Uh, the first one is for you, Bill, but I'm certain it doesn't compete to a university medal, but <laughs> let you keep it up. Thank you very much. And, and just before I move on, um, te mākoi Neil, um, thank you to the university for allowing us to honour one of our colleagues in this way at such short notice and not telling him beforehand. So, <laughs> ten, ten up, we, we appreciate that. Um, Thomas. Andrew. In the words, good luck, that's all you will think. And the number of these up late, Andrew. Nadia. Good luck, Nadia. And of course, Zach. Um, in a couple more years, some of you young ones maybe will be looking at university medals as well. Who who can say? <clears throat> okay, um, a couple of things, and then that's us. Um, I want to close us off for the karakia before we go and take our photo. Um, before that, uh, I just want to thank everybody for for coming tonight and sharing um, a little bit of what's been a massive fifty years in computer science. Uh, the places we've been, the, the the fields we've reached out to, the people that we, we've touched has been amazing. So thank you, everybody, for being here to celebrate that. Um, and also a special thanks to Anika, to Carol, to all of the team who have put up all of the stalls and who will be the last ones home tonight because they've got to take them all down again. Um, thanks to everybody who's helped make these 50 years of computer science um, happen. So a big round of applause to all of those people. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so two two quick things but before I do a karakia, I just wanted to um, mention, so we have the saying, hūtia te rito o te harakeke kei te komako e ko. Um, if you take the centre part of the harakeke um, where is the place for the kurumako to sing? Um, Pata mai kia hau, he hati me nui a te ao māku e kia tu, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. Um, if you were to ask me what is the most important thing in the world, I would say it's people, it's people, it's people. And I just want to extrapolate on that. It's not just like a person but it's the intermingling of people, it's the sharing of ideas, it's the coming together, it's the working together in collaboration. Uh, perhaps it's the late night in the basement of G Block. All of those steps, that's what the saying is about. So tēnei e mihi atuana. So I just want to acknowledge everyone for being a part of all of that coming together. He o rei kura. So kia ora everybody. Okay, closing karakia, and basically this karakia is just about taking 
everything that's within us, embracing it, and then taking it home with us. So, unu hia, unu hia, unu hia ki te uru tapu nui, kia wātia, kia māma, te nākau, te tinana, te wairua, i te aratakutu. Hoi rā e rongo, whakairi ake ki runga, kia tīna, tīna, haumie, huie, tāuki. Okay, so my last word tonight is to gather everybody and the steps out here for a photo, and then that's us for tonight. There's still, I think, drinks may be flowing, maybe some food. Enjoy yourself, catch up with everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Kia ora. <laughs>